Welcome to the Wyckoff Springs walkthrough. We're having a look at Richard Wyckoff's trading strategy of the springs that was developed over 100 years ago. We're looking at examples of how it's used in the current market today quite successfully. And we're also looking at all the criteria that builds into this strategy. The things that we look at that go into a spring, what determines a spring and how to really classify one. This is what we're going to be doing on the slides on screen. If you want to download and work through on your own time, you can click on the link in the description below where you can walk through on your own time without taking notes. This is Final Market Points, where we connect the leading market themes and the top performing companies for better trading. You can like the video to support the channel, click subscribe for updates, or comment below to let us know which patterns that you use when you're trading the markets. Now, when we're having a look, we're going to be working through these slides that we've just shared on screen now. And then the agenda that we're going to be walking through is in this order. We're going to have a look at what is a spring, who is Richard Wyckoff, and also David Weiss. We're going to look at the key points of a spring, the volume that indicates pressure, the reward for effort and ease of movement, how that's used in interpreting a spring, shortening of thrust or SOT, the coil being tight closes in a quick succession, the position of the close, the position of the pattern to the spring within the whole chart pattern, gapping springs, which is used in bull markets only, absorption lines, and then also failed springs. So as we jump on through, what is a spring? We'll quickly walk through this. It's called or described as a washout of trading range or support level that fails to follow through and leads to an upward reversal. The main ideas behind the notion of springs up thrust and shortening of the thrust is lack of follow through. That's really what we're looking for. We're looking for lack of follow through as we're getting to a base or a support line. These come from David Weiss's book, Trades About to Happen, on page 73 and 81, respectively. A great book indeed. So Richard Wyckoff, this is what the Trades About to Happen book is all based on, Richard Wyckoff's patents. So he was a successful trader from around the 1900s era, the time of JP Morgan, Jesse Livermore, if you know who those traders are. They are great traders to follow because their patents have been phenomenal and a great help. So he devised his own methods of technical analysis around the time of these two. And he also interviewed and worked with Jesse Livermore and JP Morgan, along with many others, to really build the patterns that he made. He saw their success and wanted to formula, turn it into a sort of a successful formula. So that's what Richard Wyckoff did. Now what we've done in recent, what we've seen in recent times is David Weiss has written his book, Trades About to Happen. Now he's a trader and market analyst, and he's known for being the leading practitioner of the Wyckoff course, which happens in the United States. So he's been adapting the Wyckoff theory to modern markets, and he's also developed his own trading indicators, and here's an indication of one on screen that can really be helped identify and pinpoint what we're walking through today. We're not promoting his product, we're just, that's who David Weiss is, and we're taking a lot of his ideas from the book and really putting them into current market examples and applying them. Now, there are quotes that are really quite critical. One can make a living trading springs and up thrust. That's a phenomenal quote that he's got twice in the book, David Weiss. He also says the spring can provide the impetus for a short-term pop, playable by day traders, or serve as the catalyst for long-term capital gains. They give great action signals for one to 10 trading day swings. So this is really a good summary of a spring and how they're so useful for us. Now the key points that we look at when working through a spring, looking for downward progress diminishing. The speed of the falling price slows, halts and reverses back up. So really that's a rounding out of bottom, whether you're looking at phase four from the Stan Weinstein perspective or working back with Wyckoff when he really developed this notion is access as well of those movements and phases in the market. We're also looking at the volume signature. So exhaustive volume or lack of follow through with low selling pressure. Now that's going to be critical when that happens, the volume signature. And the position of the closes. So this is showing an unwillingness to move lower. So price is reversed to trade higher either intraday or relative to the prior day or two. That's the position of the close and really pinpointing when that spring occurs. Then also price relative to the pattern. So the price the action or the relative, the recent price action shows that it's undercutting the recent prior low on the stocks chart. In concert with these other aspects of the key points of the spring, that's when we see the spring come together. So we'll start off and have a look at the selling pressure. When we see low volume springs, we see a breakdown that is mildly below the trading range with the volume. 
So with low volume. So what we're seeing here is low volume. We've got the pointer here showing low volume and it's just trading below this range where it's undercut the recent low, but it's done it on low volume. So one can surmise that the low volume, which reflected lack of selling pressure, what we're seeing here, contributed to the small penetration. So this is what David Weiss is talking about in his book on page 77, and that's really below the support line of the range. So this is a support line, whether you want to draw it here or cast the net back, what we're pointing out is that it penetrates this recent low with low volume. So there's lack of selling pressure that we're seeing there. This, is, this can be determined as similar to a volatility contraction pattern. So we've got a whole tutorial on volatility contraction patterns if you want to have a look at that and click on the link on screen to understand more about those. But we're looking at this in the spring concept, so the low volume. Let's move into a chart and we'll see those in practice. But David Wee says that notice the narrowing of price ranges. It said the selling pressure was spent and the stock was on the springboard for a much larger move up move. The price tightens as it is particularly meaningful when it appears on a monthly chart. So that's a critical point. We want to see that on VCP as well. When you bring the net back, you see the VCT in the context of VCP or the spring in the context of the overarching movement of the, of the chart or the stock, and that really helps pinpoint what's happening. So we've got 5E advanced materials, tick is ABR at the moment. We're going to see low volume highlighting low supply before the breakout, and this happens between 2020 and 2021. And then it's followed by buying pressure on the breakout. So the first example here is these yellow ones. We see that it comes back down and retests some low, retests the low before it turns around and shoots back up. As we see it pulling back, the volume really drops down, it's really low. So from a volatility contraction pattern, that's one to look for. You wouldn't say this is a VCP in itself, maybe a cup and handle is on the cards after that 30 plus percent rise. And then that's tightening. So they really got that lack of selling pressure coming in here. That's more of a Cansley method and a William O'Neill, but it is showing through right on the spring pattern at the moment. We are seeing that tightening of volume, really, really lack of supply, lack of selling pressure as it's coming and retesting the lows and then shoots back up. Another one occurs in November 2020. So as it's coming back down and retesting the lows and other lows down here that it's making along the way, we then see the volume really dry up before it turns around and shoots back up for this massive run. And then there's another one, as it's created the consolidation in the top half under that $2 mark, we're seeing it retest these lows. And then we do see that volume dry up before it shoots off for another spring. Now remember these are looking for one to 10 day trades. This here obviously in November Back 2020 Back. running through to January, February 2021. That is more than a 10 day trade and a huge one indeed coming from 80 cents over almost to $2, definitely putting on a dollar. That's a great spring, but more than the 10 days that we're looking for, maybe telling you just that tight movement there that one would use a spring for. Another example is ABZ. So ABZ's got a good example of low volume highlighting low supply before the breakout in June 2021. So this is fairly recent. Now it's then followed by buying pressure on the breakout. So let me see, it's coming down here, it's testing. This volume is drying up dramatically. It's really turning sideways, and then as it retests, we'll come back here. As it retests, it comes down towards the 200 day moving average and shoots out with supportive volume on that breakout. So here can be the early indicator. Now this is not the one to 10 day range, but we do see the volume drawing up from like a VCP perspective. And then as it comes down and retests this low, it comes well off the lows, well off the lows, clo closes it that's high and then turns around and shoots back up. But we have seen the volume really dry up showing the selling pressure has faded before this spring occurs and breaks out. But that's where the volume really starts to dry up on ABZ. We also see a reward for effort as being a critical aspect of looking at springs. High volume springs is what we're looking at now. So when a breakdown only marginally moves below the trading range with high volume, so we're looking marginally below the trading range on this pattern on the left, this is high volume in comparison to the, red, the context of what the chart has been showing. David Weiss says, we should take note of the large effort for little reward. It says someone is taking all the supply, especially if price closes well off the low. Now we're seeing this well off the low indeed. Look at that lower wick, massively down to the support line, quickly touches and then reverses and closes up right near where it opened and within the range of the previous day. So especially if it closes well off the low, a weak close would keep the outcome in doubt. Obviously on this pattern, if we'd seen the close down here, then it would be in doubt that's a massive down day, but that's a quick reversal and massive buying, so showing that it's accumulated in this area, and then it quickly shoots off up for a rally, definitely within 10 days. 
So that's reward for effort on high volume springs. Really wanted to see that close off the low. Now another great quote is whenever the volume becomes heavy at the low point of each downward down move and the downward progress diminishes, pay close attention. So we're seeing volume becomes heavy as it's rounding out, so shortening of thrust. It means the big effort earned little reward because the demand is emerging at lower levels. If the volume diminishes as the downward thrust shortens, we know the sellers are tiring. So there can be sort of the VCP pattern as it's bouncing along, the volume is high as it's being accumulated, and then the sellers are tiring along the baseline. So that can be a VCP crossover. This is where we come into the shortening of the thrust, and Fortescue Metals is showing a good example of it. We've got high volume with little reward in November 2021 as we're recording at night now. This is current. So following the buy, the breakout of a VCP from a spring off the same low. So we've got a zoom in here on this box in the top right of the overall chart. In the context, iron ore prices have been falling. We've got a massive drop coming in here. This is happening with Rio and BHP at the same time. This is the shortening of the thrust because there's massive downward movements and then it's getting smaller and smaller. It's not as obvious on this chart. That's why we've zoomed in. Here's the thrust going down, rallies back up, down, rallies down. So this is VCP happening right here. Then we're getting a tight in here. This is what we're looking at. Is we're seeing it come down and retest these lows. And then what we see is massive volume being retested. But this is very little reward. See this tiny movement here, this tiny candle. There's huge volume occurring here. But very little movement, especially in comparison to the larger candles that we've seen in the prior month or two, or even three, four months. As it's dropped down, we then see the next day confirm that it's a spring. Because we have a massive, massive candle well off the lows, closing at its high. Not as strong a volume as we would like to see, but we do see that it was really bought up and accumulated in a tight range here. So that's showing that there's being accumulated right down near the lows, and then as you can see, the share price has rallied back up over $16, and gone a little bit higher since we took these screenshots. Another example is Simic Group. So having a look at Simic, we can see high volume springs end up thrust, the yellow, that's a conversation for another video. Similar pattern, but on the other side, working on the upside. So they're up thrust in the yellow throughout 2021. Now the share prices continue to come down, but this does give us examples of springs and how they've occurred in this pattern for Simic throughout 2021. We've zoomed in on the volume to really make it easier for these two patterns. So the green hand, we're gonna see that it's come down to retest an area before, and then it reverses off the low, and then comes with this high volume movement here, and then turning back up for the spring. Creates the up thrust, comes back down to retest this low now as it's moving in from where the purple hand is. You can see the volume off the low really bounces hard. So big accumulation, big rally here, but that happens on the first candle here as it retests, turns around and comes well off the lows. That's what it's looking at, it's closing about half range and back in within the body of this tighter body here. So we see that that volume was diminishing, it showed that it sprung off, but still sold down a bit more. The volume was not as excessive, but then when it did turn around and reverse from the support area, that's when we saw the volume increase. Next one is oranges. We see the orange hands come down and retest this same support area. Well off the lows, still closing below the open and from the whole range of the prior day, massively down, but well off the lows and into this same support area. Then we do see the volume is very low. So that ceiling pressure had really eased. Two days prior, we've got massive ceiling closing right on the lows, but the ceiling has diminished down this area. It's exhausted and then turns around and reverses. Now this reversal day of the green candle shows again off the lows, it has closed up higher and didn't need to put in a lot of effort. So there's a huge reward for very little effort in comparison to what has happened in the earlier week or so. That shows that spring is underway. It has a bit of a retest here, but then again closes off the lows. So that's what we've seen throughout CIMIC in the last six months or so. Now we move on to look for the ease of movement. We want to see a rally from the spring. Now a strong rally from the retest of a low, a potential ring, spring down here. So a strong rally rises sharply on high volume. That's what we're seeing here with these green candles. The red candle is this last downward day closing well and truly under the support lines. And then the next day it opens higher, gaps higher, comes back down and retests the low, but then pushes right back through, closing above the high of the previous day. Critical strong movement there. And then this blue line's back on the 10 day moving average. That's showing huge rally from the lows of the spring with big strong volume and that continues higher to keep on rallying up. Now often the ease of upward movement is signaled by that strong close 
and high volume and points towards further gains, which we definitely see on this candle. Strong volume, strong close, big candle, up it goes. That's what we've seen with ease of movement. I'm going to use an example here for ease of movement. We've got bigger cheese, BGA as the ticker. Looking at this from February to June 2021, so starting February on the left hand side where the chart starts and working through to June earlier this year. We've got a support line here, so it bounces, rallies up, and then comes back and retests it. As it retests this low, we see it close well and truly off the high. Well and truly off the low, we should say. So high volume rallies from these springs in February. Big volume, huge volume as we're seeing on the yellow hand pointing in. Closing well and truly off the lows. But we got an inkling on the day before where we did see this is the strong volume of the large candle, but the much higher volume actually happened on the reversal day where it's traded down below the range, closed off the high. About halfway in the range was where it opened, but closed right up into the body of the day prior before it dipped into the low under that support line. That gave a strong indication of this huge volume that the rally was going to follow. And we do see that green line really pointing to the rest of the rally occurring. But most of the reward was, was created in the next day. And if you're a fast trader, you could sell out at those highs and recoup most of the gains within one day. Huge movement, buying on the open, bang, up it goes. The next retest as it comes down, we're going to see two springs, two sort of support levels really tested here. Once this more recent low being tested, we don't really see that work. It just sort of bounces. It does give a good strong rally, but we don't see a clear indication of this spring occurring. But the second one that penetrates both lines. So as the heavy day, the big red candle, not huge volume as we can see here, comes through and closes under that low. The next day it retests, comes under this low, opens lower, gaps lower, turns and falls, turns around and reverses and then shoots back up and then maintains a close above this support line that was retested and the more recent support line. So it's closing on its highs. That did it on modest volume in comparison to the rest of the pattern. Still higher than the other days that were being sold down, but not weak in itself and not a reversal in itself with that high volume. Then we see the next day indicate it gaps down lower, tries to retest this low, quickly comes back up and closes at the highs. Closes right up near the highs. This green aqua hand showing, pointing the candle and the massive volume that occurs on this reversal day. The next day it gaps up and then retests again, but doesn't actually come down the support line where the stop may be placed, stop around here, and then rallies on up for a good rally over the next 10, 15 days. That's what we do see as a good indication of a spring in Vega. Another example of a spring is Southern Cross Media SXL. Seeing the chart come from August 21, so mid-July, early July 21, throughout to November 21, where we see the highs coming up towards $2.40. We see this support line being tested, so the low in about the 27th of August, and then once a couple of days later, bouncing off that. Trying the same region once again in early August, we'll bring that chart back. Early August, and then really selling down heavily. We've got weak closes followed by weak closes, and really bring, trying to test that high. Whether well, that could be an up thrust, we'll leave that for another conversation. But it does fail to maintain these highs and get sold down for the next two days with increasing volume. Not huge volume in the context of what we've seen before, but definitely higher than the past two weeks. Then when we see that reverse, it does a gap higher, tries to retest the lows, comes back down and then plows through, pushing up way well above the prior day's candle and the whole body is outside the week, the upper week of the prior day showing a massive reversal with good strong volume. Then the next day it supports that with more volume. But the real indicator is what's happened here on this strong volume reversal. Now the stop may be a long way away, but that does indicate more buying to come and that did show over the next few months with Southern Cross Media pushing higher after this spring. Now we move over to shortening of the thrust. So if we look at the pattern on the left, the downward wedge, Many can think of this as like a volatility contraction pattern. The volatility the spikes, the retractions, the rallies, the retracements, the rally retracements are getting smaller and tighter into a point, an apex. That can be shortening of thrust. You can use it in many different ways. We're not trying to just classify the pattern. We want to look at it in the whole movement of the chart itself. Really, what it's doing is a loss of momentum. That is also a VCP aspect that we've touched on before and you can learn more on those. And we're consistently surfacing VCPs and springs that we're trying to find in the market in the shares in play stocks that we're surfacing as leading things. But overall, we're looking for this shortening of thrust because whenever the volume becomes heavy at the low points of each down move and then the downward progress diminishes, 
We want to be paying close attention. It means that big effort is earned, little reward, which we've just looked at, as demand is emerging at the lower levels. If the volume diminishes as the downward thrust shortens, we know the sellers are tiring. So as we're seeing these thrusts shortening, we may see the volume reducing, and then we do see it turn around. So if we have a look as an example, we're going to use Fortescue Metals that we had looked at before, but now we're looking at it in a new context of shortening of thrust. We've used a different trading software here to highlight the window of time and space. So time is obviously working from left to right, but the height is telling us the retracement. What we see on Fortescue Metals is a 26.9% drop, 17 bars, 25 days in total. That's a decent drop, 26, almost 27%. The next decline is 18.2%, happens only over nine days or seven bars, including the weekend. That's a shortening of the first thrust. The next one is 25%, it's increased again, but it's tighter, it's five days or seven days. So we're still we're actually seeing this sort of increase, a larger drop in a shorter amount of time. That becomes a scarier, an increase in volatility in weight. Then it starts to round out off the bottom. We're seeing a drop only 14% in the next retracement, 10 bars. Then we see 9.3% over two days. And then we do see eight bars or 12 days only losing 7%. So this is really slowing down. This is really showing that it's slowed down significantly. That's where we're looking at these thrusts before the springs and the breakouts before it then starts on its rally. And it has traded higher since on the chart. We can see the shortening of thrust here. The box is getting longer and shorter, wider and shorter. So that's what we're seeing, shortening of thrust, and that's coming into that breakout, shortening of thrust. Thinking of that basketball dropping and losing power each bounce as it goes along. That's losing some sort of a momentum. Next on is we move into the coil. So the coiling of prices is into an apex, and that can help unleash a powerful rally. Many observe these patterns as triangles, wedges, and sometimes volatility contraction patterns, VCPs. Wyckoff avoided using such labels as his preference was to observe the fractal nature of the whole movement. First the macro story of the stocks chart, then the price action. So think of the macro story being the shortening of thrust, whether it's a VCP, a triangle or a wedge, also using that in the context of what the stock's doing. Stan Weinstein calls it phase four, Wyckoff had similar, trading that, similar names as well for the cycles and phases of markets. Now we're gonna zero in and have a look at the tightening of the movement within that pattern. We're still using Fortescue because it is a recent example and a great example of showing this tightness. We've used that same chart that we had before, showing the shortening of thrust, these boxes being time, and then the drop. So we've got the 14% drop, the 9% drop, and the 7% drop on screen going across the period, coming into November 2021. We've added these yellow lines to give you sort of a, an apex to look towards. It may be coincidental that the breakout actually hurt, occurs where the apex is, Let's just ignore that for now. What we're looking at is this orange circle. We've got two aspects highlighted in orange and pointed by the yellow finger. So this is a smaller, a series of smaller contractions. These tightness of closes, really tightening, or the coil, the spring tightening, shows that the selling and buying is really not pushing one way or the other. But at the same time, we're not seeing excessive selling happening down here because the volume in this orange dotted line shows us the volume is really contained. We're seeing the histogram up and down, up and down in the volumes. And we're also seeing the candles up and down, up and down, larger ranges. Suddenly it tightens, and this is an indication of the coil about to break out the spring, the coil being tightening before it explodes up, which it does very quickly. So that's those four tight closes and lower volumes, and that's the shortening of the thrust coming right into the apex. This shortening of thrust, remember, goes back for months because iron ore prices were tanking. So we're about a 50% drop for some of these iron ore miners. And then this is the buy signal right here as we're seeing these tight closes, these four tight closes really showing that shortening of thrust and the volume tightening. Next, we move into the position of the close. Now, a high range close and a lack of reward for the effort suggests that a spring may occur. So high range, what we're talking about is if this is the whole range here, here's the high, there's the low. We're seeing a close right at the high. That's a high range close. If we cut this in half, we call that half mass. If it's closing above half mass, then it's a moderately higher close, higher range close, and lower range is the opposite. What we're going to hear is see that this can occur, this can indicate that a spring may occur. Closes mid-range or higher on the new after the new low show that an unwillingness to move lower. That's what this chart shows. 
it's a new low and it's unwilling to move lower because it's been bought up and accumulated. Now, these are the most important types of closes in both springs and retesting of springs because they indicate a change in direction. This is really the strongest indication that we can see when the, when the low is retested or a new low is tested because it can be an immediate reversal and without seeing a supportive date to indicate that the, oh, the selling pressure is eased, we can see it just in the one candle. So when retesting the spring, a mid-range close near or above the prior day's close on low volume indicates that the selling is dissipated and we'll see that in some examples and we've seen it in some already. Now when consolidating high off the spring low, the inability to return lower and retest the spring low while maintaining mid-range or higher closes can be viewed as a retest in itself. So even the candle within itself can indicate of a test that can take, other times can take a few days to retest the low. Let's move into an example. We're going to have a look at Eager's Automotive. APE is the ticket on the ASX. July 21, we saw a spring undercut the prior low, which we've got highlighted here. We had the prior low bounce well and truly off it and go for a rally did try and come back down and rallied and closed high range, but gats down massively and sold down well onto the lows of the day. The next day it retested that low. It came down, gapped lower, traded lower under the low, undercut the low, and then closed higher from the range of the day, much higher for the, we're looking at this in the context of the whole day, it closed in the upper half. So it undercut the prior low, High range close is well off the low, showing the inability to close under this support line. And that indicated that the higher prices were ahead, which we did see over the time. We did see it break out, almost retest these highs, come back down, not necessarily retest the spring because it's well and truly out of that pattern, but did fall back onto support and then rallied up higher to break out and trade up towards $17.60 as we can see on the chart. We're gonna use another example, OMH. OM Holdings, OMH is the ticker. Now in March 21, we saw a spring with weak volume occur. So here we see it coming down and retesting the low. This is weak volume that we've highlighted in this pink circle. It retested again in late March. Again, we're seeing this pink circle highlight the lower volume and really not show a huge conviction that it's happening. So there's low conviction on these springs, probably not one that would be traded. Now tight closes in April after this show an effective retest of the spring and absorbing the selling pressure. And that's before rallying on the two year highs. So this was effectively the retest of the spring. Didn't come back down, but we saw these closes well and truly off the low. And we saw good strong volume showing that it was absorbing the selling pressure. With all this selling that was coming in, it was still holding up within the top of the range and then breaking out and rallying higher. So while the springs occurred here on low volume, we show, it showed that the selling pressure in this orange circle, these tight closes and high volume, were retesting the spring before it broke out and rallied higher. Then we want to look at the position of the pattern. This again is forward skill on the left-hand side, really giving context for how important and crucial it is to see the pattern in the context of the spring pattern, in the context of the overall movement of what the market is doing or the stock itself. This is what we're talking about, fractal nature. So we zoom in and focus on the minutia here, the volume signatures, the candle by candle after understanding the context that this may be rounding at the bottom. The main idea and notion behind springs and up thrusts and shortening of the thrust is that lack of follow through. So that's what we're having a look in here on the candles day by day and looking at the bar charts of the volume. You only need to know how to read three basic elements. That's price range, position of the close and volume. And then see them within the context of the lines of the larger time frames. So when we're zeroing in on this aspect here, when we're looking for the spring, it's understanding the price range, the position of the close, and the volume. That's the analysis here. And as long as we see it within the context of the overall movement, that really gives us a great setup for the springs, and that's what we're looking for. So the shortening of the downward thrust, which we've seen here on Fortescue, in, in an oversold position, which one may justify this is oversold from that dramatic fall in a short amount of time, that can also happen within the downward channel or a pattern that suggests the spring could happen. So that can be a triangle if you're looking for those, wedges, however you want to determine them, could be a downward channel, then applying the price range position and close into that context to understand the spring and the justifying of putting a trade on. We're gonna use an example of Southern Cross Media. We are seeing this tightening, the shortening of the thrust, it's highlighted by this. You can call it falling wedge, however you wish to phrase this pattern. That the dotted line shows the lows that were being retested. 
They were retested on this first yellow hand on the left hand side with a dotted line. This is a five year monthly chart and it's really showing that downward wedge also on the left hand side and it failed to break out and push up to those highs again. So it then came down and retested and that created a spring low. So this is January 2019 and we do see the, so it's really in that downward pattern. It's tried to break out and rally. It did rally if you want to look at that as a spring and then trade up. But the overall context, it's still in a downward movement, coming from $11 down to $1 in a matter of three or four years. That's really that phase four basing pattern of 2021 to 20, 2020 to 2021, COVID lows, and then churning out this basing pattern here, the dotted line on the right hand side. In here where the yellow hand is pointing on the right, that is May 21 with the constructive closes and volume combination for a spring. So this is the overarching pattern and understanding the times to trade at spring. Then we move over to absorption lines. This is when tight closes occur along the support line or resistance lines, and these can be seen as absorption lines. So when we take action in the context of a spring and macro price action, these trading behaviors can indicate the absorption of either buying or selling at the presence of a larger demand or supply. We are seeing it along here, moving along the absorption line. It's really being absorbed on this supply line, and we want to see high volume as it's coming out and testing it, which we have seen. Then we also use an example for core lithium. CXL is a ticker showing some absorption lines. We're going to focus on the black dotted line because we're looking at springs, we're not looking at up thrusts at the moment. So the VCP from February 2021 highs that we see on the left hand side, down to the lows of March, then in May, in July, they finally broke out in July up the right hand side to climb and break out to where it is today in current trading. Now the overhead resistance saw at 30 cents and selling absorbed by the buyers. So we're seeing attempting to break out here, whether there's springs and trying to rally and break out. We see the volume here being accumulated. So the absorption lines showing higher volume up here and here. But in here, we're trying to, we're not seeing excessive selling come in, it's being absorbed. So any attempt to sell down and push and retest these lows at this lower black dotted line has been absorbed up near this resistance line. So this is showing it's actually becoming absorbing. We're seeing it be accumulated here. So the buyers have suddenly moved from being down here to accumulate at the higher range at the overhead resistance. That's the indication that we're seeing an absorption line occur at the top, which is supportive of what we saw down the bottom. And suddenly it moves and breaks out 30 cents, runs 60 cents, and as it's still going today, good movement. Now we move into the gapping springs. A gap is known as the difference between the close of one day and the open of the next day. These can be quite obvious as we see on the left hand side. We can see some gaps down. So we see a close and then this candle highlighted and then well and truly down, gaps down, massive gap down. We got another gap down. These can be obvious. We'll try to find some gap ups, which we can see from this little candle pattern here to a gap up there. Gapping in springs tends to be a little bit harder to see on the chart. This is a dramatic rally or dramatic decline on the chart on the left hand side. We don't see these all the time. Because we'll highlight a gap, gap, seeing more gaps, a gap up, gap up, gap down, gap down. There are many gaps in that pattern. A very fast moving stock, Fortis Q indeed. But this one shows more gaps. When we see a gap down here, we're looking normally for a, a rally up here with this sort of gap. It would mean that we've missed the buy point the stop is well and truly away from our entry. The risk, the reward is terrible and we probably wouldn't take the trade. If we look for a small gap, so the gap up happens the day after the prior low has been tested and that's setting up the spring. The open of the next day trades above the close of the prior day. So think about it as time has been continuous, not the second hand tick, tick, tick. But think of joining the open to the close of the day before and looking at that actual range between the days. If there's a gap between the close of the prior day, the day that's tested the low, and then the next day, so if we've had the test that's testing the low come down and reverse, and then rally back up to indicate that we have a strong close, that the selling pressure has not been able to push down and see lower levels closed, it's been reversed, and then we see a gap up, that is an even stronger indication that spring has more buying because that's set up, that's open the next day, really gapping above the close of the prior day, says that it's a great preference to move higher. Now ideally the share price runs from the open with momentum and doesn't come back to the open. It just keeps rallying and running harder and faster, which can be a candle like what we see here, this big green candle. 
percentage-wise, that's a massive movement. I'm going to jump in and have a look at Vega Cheese for a zoom in of this gapping movement. We've retested the low here in September 2021. We've tried to touch it three times and rallied back out of it. It's closed higher. They've closed higher in the range, mid-range. It's closed in the lower half of the range, but well off the higher for three consecutive days. Tries to rally. It's still within this downward movement. If you're drawing a pattern, you may can draw that yourself. Then we highlight here what's happened. We've retested the low. From a spring perspective, we've closed down near the lows one day. Then that indicates more selling pressure to come. The selling pressure does come. It, it opens and then falls and falls and falls well and truly below that support line. But support comes in and doesn't need massive volume. It turns around and reverses and closes in the higher range. Ideally, we would have seen strong volume there, but nonetheless, the candle itself indicates that it's closed in the upper half of the range and well and truly above that support line, which shows that it's unwillingness to close lower and move lower. Critically, the next day we see it jump up and we've zoomed in here. That was the close of this downward wick, and then the next day it jumps up and rallies. It hasn't really looked back, it just keeps climbing and climbing for a close on the day. It doesn't do it with massive volume. But that's what we're talking about with a gap. That's the example of a gap. It did come down and retest it, which could give a low entry to buy if one wanted that, and then using stops under the support line. Before it then turns around like a spring we want to see it do, and impulsively move up towards us at the resistance levels up above. So that was at a gap up, a spring that gapped up. It did come down and retest. Depending on where you put your stops, you may still be in a trade or not. But ideally, you want to see volume coming with that signature too. Now we move to failed springs. When the spring setup has completed, although the follow through does not provide higher prices, the spring has failed. So we're seeing it tested, does close well and truly off the lows with good strong volume. That indicates there's a spring because it's come through this ice line, this support line has been broken, but it gaps down and it fails. In the current market environment, November 2021, we haven't seen as many of those. So we had to look for some gold stocks to find them. But this, gap, this can really be reflected as with weak closes and closing back or near the prior low. So these were weak closes straight off the bat and then they did fall. That's the example of gold. Most of the industrials and other companies have continued higher, so we don't have too many in recent times. But that's what we'd be looking for. If we're unable to really rally and bounce off this support line, we're seeing weak closes, heavy volume, then that's showing that there's diminishing. And that's that reflecting that the weak closes are closing back near the prior low. The characteristics reflect that the sellers have the upper hand and that the possibility of higher prices then diminishes. These patterns are consistent with bearish market phases and highlight the importance of monitoring the leading market themes. So as we're seeing here with these gold stocks, they were the ones that had springs failing and that's why we're consistently surfacing the leading market themes. We want to be looking at the companies that are pushing higher as a group collectively because that is where statistically we see a more, more supportive movement of springs bouncing and rallying and showing higher movements in a shorter period of time. The explosive movements, that's why we're consistently surfacing those higher and leading themes. Another example is Regis Resources, RRL. The failed spring shows that a day with strong closes and well above average volume. So we're seeing this here reversal. It's come down from this support line. That's been broken, doesn't reverse in the first day. It still closes heavy in the, in the movement of the candle, low range, then comes and retests this low. It gaps well and truly down. It falls and falls and falls. Then with huge volume, it turns around and pushes back up, closes well and truly into the upper half of the range, regains this low, doesn't quite regain the support before, falls back a little bit. That can be an indication itself, also knowing that it's a heavy sector in this market because we are servicing the leading companies. This is definitely not in that top third. So we know that there's alarm bells for this spring to be failed if it's in that bottom third of the, of the, indices on, of the industries on the market. So then we're seeing the recovery from the lows fails in the following days. You just see it's gapped down and hasn't been able to do it. And then it's unable to recover the close on the day of the lows that they were tested. It's just saying down, down, and if it goes. So that's the failed springs. That's why scanning the market, applying springs is one thing, understanding the springs and how to really use them, determine them with the price action, the overall market movement, that's really critical. But as we've seen statistically, the chances of improving a spring dramatically rise when we do see 
it in the leading market theme. So that's why we're consistently surfacing in shares in play, the top six of the leading market thematics for applying this technical analysis and then the leading industries to show that market dominance. So to support the channel, you can like this video, you can subscribe for updates, and if you want to work through this in your own time, you can download that in the link below.